Hi, I'm Scott Mendes, President and Founder of Western Harvest Ministries and also Western Harvest Media. We're coming, with to, you, uh, coming to you today with an interview from a new friend of mine, Sam Bell. How are you? I'm doing outstanding today. Excellent. Sam is an up-and-coming young bull rider. I actually got a chance to meet Sam through Western Wishes. Um, today we're coming to you from the 7 Rocking X Bull Riding Ranch here just outside of Comanche, Texas. Uh, Sam is an encouragement to me. I hope that this interview will encourage some of you other young bull riders that uh, have maybe gone through some injuries and, and had some dreams in life uh, that were maybe were on hold. Um, but it's exciting for Sam today because coming back off some injuries, he's back to riding again. I just want to talk to him about his heart, his relationship with God, and some of his future goals. Sam, tell us a little bit, uh, first of all, how old you are, where you're from, and uh, how you got started riding bulls. Well, um, I'm I originally, am, you know, I'm 16 years old, but I originally, you know, once I was born, you know, when my parents were still together, you know, we grew up in a little town called Leader, Minnesota, but mainly where I spent most of my childhood is in a little town called Nimrod, Minnesota. That's what I call home. But, you know, it was kind of odd, you know, I guess me getting into bull riding because, you know, Bells, we come from a generation of bronc riders, you know, saddle bronc riders, and I guess you could look at it and say it was frowned upon for someone to break the trend, you know, and my dad, he always pushed me, and, you know, he's, you know, he wasn't pushing me, I guess, but he always wanted me to be a bronc rider, he'd always say, well, I got my saddle, you, I, you got my leggings, you know, you can, you can do it, and, but I just didn't want to, you know, I mean, my dad used to pick up for a few amateur rodeo companies, and ever since I seen it there, I always just wanted to do it, and, and dad would have a bunch of feeder calves around there at home, you know, he raised about 500 head, and, you know, we, me and my buddies had lots of next door neighbors. We all wanted to be bull riders. We'd rig us up a little shoot out of something and, you know, we'd be bucking them out and dad'd come down there kind of halfway to chew us out, you know, for running pounds off him. But you could kind of halfway see him smile when he turned around so we knew he was all right. We just kept bucking him. And I got on my first bull uh, in Nimrod, Minnesota. There was a little bucking bull outfit there. He's made a pretty good name for himself in the Northern Slains bull riding circuit. Um, when I was nine years old, got on my first one. About like that first one I got on today, just one jump and then we were off. But when I was uh, 10 years old, this, that next spring, I went to a Fred Betcher bull riding school and that really helped me a lot. Started Little, Rich and, Little Rich's rodeo in that summer. Made the national finals, was maxed out on points. Went down there, took 11th in the world. And then the, the next coming fall, I started junior high rodeo. and. Three years running, I was a state champion junior high. Went to nationals, you know, for two years anyways. I didn't go my sixth grade year, we couldn't afford it. But the last two years I went down there, but I couldn't get much accomplished. You know, fell off some ones that I shouldn't have. And, you know, that first year that I was in high school, come off a long bull riding trip and come home, got hurt. And then I've been out for a year and a half. And then just today we're coming back. So here we are. Well, I've been around Sam for a few hours here today at the ranch. Uh, he got on a couple bulls. I was I was unfortunately not able to be here for that, but he's very much gave us some detail about it. Uh, what I would like for Sam to share just a little bit about was his injury. I know he kind of jumped over it, um, and, and I can I can share some of it for you, Sam. Sam had a really bad bull riding injury, head injury. Uh, well, why don't you just tell him, Sam? Well, you know, like I said, you know, when I was coming off that long bull riding streak, you know, and then I got hurt. I got hurt at hometown bull riding there in Nimrod and come out there, made a few rounds and got bucked off, landed on my back real hard and landed on the back of my head so it made my brain bounce to the front so I got contusions in my frontal lobe. Broke about five or six ribs and uh, one of them ribs punctured a lung so uh, went to the, on the way to the local hospital. They had to resuscitate me, running me there and then they there and spent about two and a half months down there and come home and I've just been waiting for this day. <laughs> wow, um, I know we had talked too briefly in another interview for Western Wishes about um, how you've been able to overcome that and because it was so tragic that you're still with us that God must certainly have a plan for your yes, life. Yes sir, he does. And I know you're, you're not going to take that lightly because you've been very successful with your writing. You've gone over some stuff. Let's talk just a minute. You said something in an earlier interview, uh, Sam, about your 
about your childhood, about your stepmother. Has life at home always been easy or have there been some things that you've overcome? Let me just give you some background on my life. My parents divorced when I was four or five years old. I rode my first calf at six. We had no money. I had dreams of being a world champion bull rider. I was tempted by all the things in the world, but through my friend's injury and death in the arena, God got a hold of me and began to show me that I was really selfish by wanting all these accomplishments in my life. And when I saw my friend pass away before my eyes, I realized that my life, that could have been me. It changed my life. And I just, I, I, I relate to you in a lot of ways, and I want to encourage you that it's not so much what's been thrown at us, it's kind of what we do with it. And even in your childhood, some things that you've overcome, you've been overcoming a lot of stuff. And I just want to encourage you that God is not through with you, nor anybody that's watching this video. I mean, it says, delight yourself in the Lord, His Word. Uh, and that he will give you the desires of your heart. So if you want to ride bulls, you're going to be able to do that. But tell us a little bit about your upbringing and some other challenges that you've overcome. Well, you know, my like you said, your parents divorced at 4 or 5. That was about the same time mine divorced. Um, uh, we moved away when I was about 8 years old. My dad got married, you know, and she always just seemed real standoffish with me. Didn't really like having a young kid around. And they ended up getting married and just when I was about 10 or 11 I said you know dad I'd rather go somewhere where I'm actually wanted to be and I'll work for somewhere where I'm wanted you know but and you know I had a few, little small herd I had a couple cows of my own started there and we live you know where me and my mom used to live we lived all on the same family farm from her side of the family we were the fifth generation and uh, I said to grandpa I said can I run my stock with yours he said sure bring them on over come over and it was kind of nice, you know, because that was right, you know, just four miles down the road and we had a buck and bull arena, you know, every Wednesday practices in the summer and, you know, I can say that that really helped me. I mean, just getting on consistently every week, even if you only go get on one or two, but I mean, rather than going, you know, driving four hours to get somewhere, you get on eight head and then you don't come back for three months. Do you think that your grandfather kind of um, imparted some wisdom, some guidance, some kind of male role model figure that you needed in your life at that time? You know, I'm pretty positive he did. You know, he'd always, he'd always say, you know, just don't worry about it. He said, they got their life over there, and we got our life over here. He said, you know, this is what you want to do, this is what you're going to do, and he said, and I'll definitely help you along the way. What, what, about, um, what about your first recollection or knowledge or hearing about a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I don't know your faith or anything now, but I know that you know because you told me that you know that God's got a plan for your life. When did when did your relationship with God kind of really help you? I can say, you know, just like, you know, when you started, things started actually coming to me in the hospital, you know, because for a while there I was, I was really out of it, you know, and things started coming to you and, you know, there was a lady that, you know, she was the you know, priest in the hospital there and she'd come hang out with me every couple of days and we'd chat for a while and you know that's when it started coming to me and just you know every person that see and say you know you're you know you're it's a miracle you're alive and that's when I just started thinking you know he must have something in mind for me exactly well I can most of the people watching this video understand you know we've, we've been through a lot of stuff in life everybody yours has just been an incredible journey not only with your childhood with your injuries, you know, like I used to say in bull riding, it can only get better from here. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, is you know, it's just like today. You know, I got on three head today. First bull come out there, just one jump, I'm off. You know, but I mean, I had the worst jitters a guy can have. There ain't been on nothing in over a year, and come out there, I just sat there all stiff. He just pulled me down right there, slid off my rope. And you know, if you come off and you're all mad about that, you know. But I, when I got off, I was just calm, collective, and check myself, make sure I'm all good, and, you know, just go at it with the same set of mind, you know, getting on the next one, and next one, we about covered him, so, and, you know, that's the only second bullet in a year and a half, so I felt pretty good about it, and, you know, sometimes you look at it, you know, today, when you sh I should have covered all three of them bulls, when I used, I would have rode them three all day long, maybe been able to have a little lunch while I was at it, but, you know, you, you're kind of mad at yourself after at first there, but after you think about it, you think, man, I ain't been on in a year and a half, and then you start thinking, well, I guess I'm kind of proud of myself. In a way, that's just how I tried to go at it today. That's real exciting, Sam. I just want to encourage you that as you get to rodeo, and you know, for me, 
I wasn't always a Christian when I was rodeoing, going to the finals the first couple times, but there was a point in my life where I became committed to my relationship with God above my bull riding. Because you and I both know that a lot of our friends and people we rodeo with, that rigging bag, that bull rope, that buckle, that smell of the arena, everything about that lifestyle becomes the most important thing in their lives. And for me, I learned a scripture that says, what is it that a man gains the whole world but loses his own soul in the process? And that was me, Sam. I wanted to win the world so bad that I really wasn't enjoying life. I wasn't, um, you know, being a blessing to be around. I was just really focused. But if you put God first, son, in your goals and you continue to live and to be an example in that arena for him, you'll do great things. I'm not promising you that it's always going to be easy oh, because I know there, there's, there's difficult times. You know, I know it ain't going to be easy. And, you know, that's like... You know, I used to, you know, when I first started riding bulls, you know, I was nine, ten years old, go to some little, you know, drop pot rodeos, maybe try and win a little money, but whenever you fall off, you know, you see them guys that come back there and throw their rope, you know, throw a fit about it, and I did that because I thought that's what you were supposed to do, but I got to think about it, I said, well, I'm really not that mad, I didn't think I did too bad, so why am I doing this, when you can just come back on another one, give it your best shot, and it just goes with any event you do in rodeo. If you're mad about it all the time, you're just going to keep getting worse and worse. you got to go at it with the same set of attitude, and you know what? It's going to click soon enough. Mm -hmm.